very good afternoon to all of you uh, today uh, i'll be going to speak with uh, on the a particular topic that is uh, widely coming up in this present context of civil engineering mechanical engineering aerospace engineering and so and so forth in this particular domain of civil mechanical and aerospace engineering the primarily the the concept of metamaterials are converging in a very very fast or very rapid manner so i would be speaking primarily on this topic and uh, what is the consequences of these metamaterial aspects on the design as well as in the analysis point of view and what are the particular thematic area that people are looking forward uh, while exploration of the research and teaching mode okay so the next the the idea of this meta material actually converges in a bit different mode uh, and we have a very typical domains that has been identified uh, with regard to this metamaterial. Primarily, there are three different subdomains that has been identified. One is called the mechanical metamaterial, and then people talk about the optical, then people talk about the electromagnetic metamaterial, and so on and so forth. But as a civil engineers, or as a allied disciplines of the mechanical and aerospace engineering point of view, I'll be primarily uh, talking about the mechanical metamaterial. So what exactly the metamaterial tells us that let us first look into that. Mechanical metamaterials are essentially are a man-made structure. Okay, it is not a, it is not a, Mm, it is not a, a new kind of material, but it is basically ori originated in the sense that how the different architecture of the material, the material could be the polymeric, material could be the metallic, material could be the any other cases, the base material could be. But with the use of this polymeric or metallic metamaterial, um, um, metallic material, how we could orient or how we could uh, organize our internal architecture so that it would give an unusual behavior. For example, sometimes people talk about the uh, negative poison ratio. As a civil engineer, we talk about the poison ratio, Young's modulus, CR modulus, bulk modulus. Okay, now, whether our poison ratio in generally in our present context or present um, protocol is the poison ratio to be lying between, let's say in a theoretical sense, zero to 0.5. Can we have the poison ratio to be negative? Or can we have the CR modulus to be negative in sense? So that these, these unusual material characteristics could be possible and that could be impacted onto the practical domain of the structural applications, right? So in that particular context, the mechanical metamaterials are essentially man-made structure with counterintuitive mechanical properties. That is what I am saying. That originates, which is originating from their unit cell instead of the properties of each of the components. So the typical mechanical metamaterials are generally with related or associated with the stiffness, the rigidity and the compressibility. And typically the mechanical metamaterials are closely correlated with four elastic constant, for example, the poison ratio, the Young's modulus, CR modulus, bulk modulus. So these materials possesses 
unusual mechanical material properties that are derived from their microstructural geometry rather than from their material composition. So let us look into that. One is there in a material composition point of view, whether it is a concrete or whether it is a steel or whether it is a polymer. And we have a, we are not actually deviating that material composition. What we are taking up, we are taking up the microstructural geometry of those materials or I would say composed of with those materials. The fabrication and the testing of rationally designed metamaterial microstructure in three dimensions are extremely in a very rapid sense it is emerging. So this lecture, my lecture would serve a brief introductory uh, features to this main classes of different mechanical metamaterials and highlight the benefits that arises when unique structural design principles and micro or the nanomechanical size effects are combined to exhibit the unprecedented properties, deformation behavior, multifunctionalities, and that could not be achieved with the conventional architectural configuration of the structure. Okay. The anomalous mechanical response says of these mechanical metamaterials are a highly desired target in the design of modern materials with advanced properties in the aerospace structure, defense structure, even our civil engineering structures also. So different modes of additive manufacturing are also very emerging in uh, nature. So this with the advent of these different additive manufacturing techniques are also being utilized over here, which are essentially reducing the structural size effect of the fabricated materials and the range of usable unusual characteristics and which are mostly important with the unit cost. Okay, so the, what is the relevant and what is the parameter that we are basically dealing with? We are basically dealing with internal architecture or the microstructural constituents or the configuration. Okay, I'll be slowly going over there that different behavior wise, how the classification actually going to take place. Okay. So as I said previously, the classification essentially build up is building up on four different parameters, which are mechanical parameters, the poison ratio, which essentially talks about the or termed as an oxidic metamaterial. Okay. So the mechanical metamaterials, as I said, are the man-made structure with the counterintuitive properties that originate from the geometry of the unit cell. Unit cell means you say in the microstructure or in the micromechanics, we used to always we used to consider a unit cell rather than uh, because we have to take the we have to make the homogenization approaches or homogenization properties. So the typical mechanical metamaterial generally with the stiffness, rigidity, compressibility, and so on and so forth. And I have tried my level best to provide over here a wider domain on which many people are now working over there around the globe. So sometimes a group of people are talking about, only talking about how to develop the negative poison ratio based architectural configuration and thereby deviating or impacting to the uh, um, structure so that the things would be derived in a much different manner or counterintuitive manner. Okay. Similarly, some people, a group of people are talking about the negative poison ratio, uh, negative stiffness, sorry. Sometimes people talk about the Young's modulus, even though it is correlated with the stiffness property. And sometimes people talk about the compressibility or negative compressibility. Okay. So how these things could be achieved or what are the basic understanding of it there? Recently, we have done a, uh, a uh, typical case study over here that I first, uh, let me first introduce over here. 
so what we did is it is for a defense application we did the in the defense application specifically the primary target is or primary goal is that to reduce or to mitigate the blast and impact or to make the resistance of the blast and impact okay so if we have that particular target to mitigate the blast and impact we have developed a microstructural configuration with the composites and that is why we talked about is a meta composite why we are talking about it is a meta composite because it is a basically two or more different materials are integrated to form the meta material or the architectural configuration that combined the combined material or structure can be termed as a meta composite and this term meta composite has been frequently been used in electronics and optical meta applications even though but has recently introduced in the mechanics in the last few years not more than a decade okay so we recently studied this effectiveness of this meta composite sandwich structure with the auxatic 3d reentrant corner or reentrant lattice core and the semi auxatic braided composite right and the face sheet is subjected to the uh, face sheet is subjected to the your ballastic impact a hierarchical or the information pass, uh, passing multi scaling approach has been selected where the fine scale or the at the first um, top left uh, corner the if we, if you look into that we have been started from the micro scale and then we are going to the meso and then we are going to the macro scale where the structure is going to get fabricated okay so that is why in a hierarchical or the information passing multi scale approach has been selected where the fine scale or the micro scale is been idealized and its overall or averaged property or responses is being infused into the core scale or the meso or the macro scale so this three level approximation at the micro meso and the macro has been adapted for a multi scale in a multi scale finite element model so let us first look into the um, uh, model or the analysis then we can go into the uh, design or the fabrication point of view because when we talk about the design and fabrication point of view this particular structural configuration cannot be readily fabricated it has to be taken into account with the help of some 3d printing technology or the 4d printing technology okay and we have also been showing over here that how the responses are being characterized or responses are being accelerated with response with comparison to the conventional um, meta composites right with the con conventional meta composite so here what we did is essentially we have been starting as i said previously we have been starting from the micro scale then we are basically infusing that particular properties to the macro and the meso and macro scale right so we have been utilized or and we have been sequentially developed a particular um, toolbox that uh, takes gen which is a python based uh, computing softwares we have um, that essentially takes into account a different uh, orientation or different configurations okay and essentially eventually we have been introduced the what kind of possible failure modes or failure criteria that could be that could be um, really required or really um we can say that this type of failure mode can happen over here okay this type of failure mode can happen so we have been utilize the regular or conventional third party commercial packages like nc sabacus as well as we have developed our own particular um, module which was been integrated into the abacus and nc and with the entire thing we have been talking about that how it would be really applicable towards the impact and uh, blast resistance or blast mitigations okay 
So I'm not going into the detail, uh, something more over the, what we have been done over here. But essentially, if you see the um, top right figure, whatever I'm showing over here, the point being over here that when an impact or when a blast is coming into the picture, the particular goal is that how much time that you require to mitigate or how much time you require to mitigate or to resist the kinetic energy that is being imparting onto the structure. Okay, so if we are introducing a non-oxotic, that means not non-negative poison ratio or the conventional structure, it is, it is actually retaining certain kinetic energy after impacting the bullet or after impacting the blast. But if you are, uh, but if you are reorienting our design by incorporating certain material property, which is having the oxotic or the negative poison ratio or negative stiffness property, perhaps we could achieve at certain point of time that kinetic energy is being diminished almost a zero joule or zero um, kilojoule. Okay, so the energy absorption capacity has been greatly impacted or greatly been reduced over here, which is obviously could be utilized not only for the defense sector, but also for the civil engineer, civil mechanical or aerospace engineering. Okay, and we are in the process of manufacturing that thing in our 3D printing lab to understand what is the correlation between the, um, your numerical models, analysis design with the experimental features, right? So here we have shown some body armor plate, which is having a direct impact over here and which essentially requires to be very, very well, uh, well proved before making it into a fabrication. So that is what we are going back towards a little more that how the design to be oriented in this way. Okay. The same thing over here. This is a bullet uh, bulletproof jacket. On this bulletproof jacket, in you would be surprised in most of the um, till 2018, uh, most of the bulletproof jackets were being imported from Israel and some other countries. But all of a sudden, when the uh, our Indian government actually uh, gave a clear verdict that all the things would be the make in India um, more. The, on 2018 to 19, the, there are several fragments of the different startups and companies have been developed or um, initiated. And now India is exporting that industry standard or international standard bulletproof jacket to the um, other foreign soils. Okay. So the basic understanding over there that we have the technology, but we are basically not um, uh, exploiting that technology in our own ground soil. And thereby we are not able to make our own um, component or own product. So with this particular thematic goal, we have been started over there and we are at the verge of having certain very, I, I would say what I would say that uh, um, very interesting features that we can develop over here in our, with all of our Indian uh, people, uh, with the academia and industry partnership, that many things can be developed our Indian soil and um, we can develop the technology at our own. Okay. So the, these are all about the, again, the body armor plates and with the dual negativity of the um, oxotic uh, metamaterials and so on and so forth. Next thing, let me just, next thing that we are going, that what exactly the, this oxotic stands for and how it is deviating from the conventional material. According to the classical theory of poison ratio for a 3D isotropic material, 
it is ranging from minus 1 to 0.5 okay most of the day to day conventional material poses a positive poisson ratio now when it is the what is what does this mean this means that when it is stretched in one direction it will shrink on the other direction so this phenomena is due to the realignment of the interatomic bonds when it is deformed right now the material possessing a true zero value of poisson ratio when it deforms in one direction have no effect on the other direction and this this primarily may be due to the air voids which might present in the structure okay and which is not allowing to change the atomic bond alignment when it is deformed so the material possessing with the negative poisson ratio when it is stretched in one direction will also have the stress in the other direction or compressed in one direction will get again narrower in the other direction and that is why it is termed as a or people have already made the terminology that it is called an oxartic a u x c t i c oxartic materials so this phenomena is primarily due to the unique geometry architecture essentially we are not basically making any changes over the material composition we are basically making as a designer or as an engineer we are basically making the changes of the geometric architecture and the orientation of the cross section on which the expansion in the both the direction actually takes into the picture right so here also i have trying to showing a particular um, polymeric foam which we have been developed in our uh, lab uh, by using 3d printers that this foam is essentially giving you the similar counter intuitive properties which obviously requires a high volume change okay so the this oxartic art of at the present context are emerging in a very great interest due to the usefulness in the novel characteristics itself in a two folded manner first fold is the counter intuitive or the opposite response and the high volume change so they provide a route essentially they provide a route to achieve the unusual or extreme values of the other material property which are not clearly or achievable in the conventional materials okay so it is having a very different it is having a very different uh, idea or very different thought process that we have to um, uh, provide over here now there are many different naturally now people talk about if you are talking about everything is a man made or artificial or synthetic material or synthetic uh, structure then does it have anything in a nature which occurs yes it occur it is a having if you look into the if you closely look into the cat skin it is it is very very flexible and that flexibility comes due to this oxartic in nature there are certain materials which are natural naturally uh, existed something like iron pyrite cadmium arsenic plate etc these are naturally occurring there the naturally occurring oxartic behavior or unusual behavior you can you can see if you if you do the microstructural analysis in a, in a 3d um, scanning electron microscope i believe that you will be getting with the in situ scanning electron microscope you will be getting this kind of behavior okay recently i come came across this uh, cat skin feature um, uh, from one of my friend from the biology so we are trying to uh, make i was uh, giving the um, saying that uh, this kind of mechanics is now emerging so could you please uh, tell us that which kind of our animal skins is uh, might have this kind of characteristics so even eventually it is not uh, till now is a full proved uh, feature 
but we have uh, gone through a little bit over here to identify that uh, it is essentially due to the um, this counterintuitive or the oxidative behavior okay so there is many different ways or many different length scales that is having length scale means what is meant by the length scale length scale means let's say for example if I, something is a having 10 to the minus 9 meter and if we had a having meter then 10 to the nine, minus 9 meter is called the nano scale and the um, whatever we are the reference frame is the meter then it is called the macro scale or the engineering scale so at every scale whether it is a nano scale whether it is a micro scale meso scale macro scale every scale there are certain different governing features have been there, which essentially gives you certain clue that you orient or you design your structure or material in the sense that you require this particular feature, you will be definitely getting. So it is not only essentially available at the macro scale, but it is also equally available at the very, very lower scale which the nanotechnology people or the material science people talks about. Okay, but as an engineering people, we are talking about only uh, at the macro scale and sometimes at the very, very um, uh, rare sense, we are talking about the micro scale. But what I am saying is at every scale, we, we are having this kind of features and we have to take those kind of features to exploit those features at from the different scale to design or redesign our, our structure so that this counterintuitive property could be given. Okay, so essentially this, this particular uh, cellular solid structures are responsible for these oxidic properties and major category I, I would say or the major subcategory I would also someone could say are that Four, three major subcategories are there. One is called the reentrant structure. Reentrant structure is a very, very old, uh, old fashioned structure. I think in 1960s onwards, there's um, these re reentrant structures are being existed. But nobody actually thought about in that particular sense that how it could be utilized in our regular or practical problems. So now the things are coming up. So in that particular domain, the reentrant structures are very, very uh, widely using right at the moment. So essentially, I would say, uh, if you talk about a benzene ring or the um, graphene structure, it is a regular honeycomb structure. So if we are regular or conventional honeycomb, if you are talking about, then if you are talking about the, a 2D reentrant honeycomb, you will find only few differences are there. Only few differences. Only we are, we are basically orienting the geometry in the sense that it would provide me the essential features that I desire over here. Right. So the cellular structure or rotating units, whatever we have. So essentially, the reentrant structure formed from the lonsens or the square grid by eliminating or by reorienting some of the angular. Uh, orientation, uh, it would give you the oxidic effect. And that is due to only the rotation and the extension of some of the limbs or some of the elements over there. It could be the spring elements or it could be some other 1D rod element. Okay. So we are basically giving this kind of configuration instead of the above configuration of the conventional honeycomb. Okay. Then the next thing is oxidic cells that is being produced by transformation of the conventional cell structure into a reentrant cell structure in which the ribs protrude inwardly. That protrude inwardly it is being. So when the vertical protruding ribs are under the tension, the ribs in lateral direction will tend to move out and leading to the lateral expansion. When the compression is being applied, the ribs will bend inward and further, this, which is resulting in a lateral contraction in response to the axial compression. 
so these oxidic structure are most likely it is uh, in a in a uh, practical sense it people are started using i'll be coming um, at the end how it is being utilized in the seismic um, wave absorption or seismic matter material i would say okay so this this another one thing that is the second subclass is called the chiral structure this chiral structure is another one or another kind of structure which have been developed for oxidic honeycombs so in this figure a and the top left sorry the basic chiral unit which is highlighted in the bold fashion uh, are first formed by connecting the uh, straight ligaments ligaments means i i talk about the ribs to the central nodes which may be the circular or which may be the circles or the rectangles the whole chiral structures are then formed by joining together the chiral unit or the chiral unit okay the oxidic effects are then achieved through the warping or the unwarping of the ligaments of the ribs around the nodes in response to an applied force the poisson ratio of the chiral structure which was being shown in the figure a under in plane deformation is around minus 1 the structure in figure b at the bottom right which is being connecting the symmetrical blocks where the nodes in each of the chiral or the chiral building block is rectangular though there is an infinite amount of ribs attached to the at each node to form a building block it is evident that this exotic effects depend on the shape of the node and the length of the attach rib or the ligaments okay so with this the next thing that again i am trying to provide again a animated configuration or figure over here so how the different orientation rotation or how the translation or the contraction of the different building block or the unit cell one particular um, your square block let's say it is an unit cell or the units so how these different units to be compacted or connected together in a different fashion so when it is being stressed or when it is being oriented rotated or giving the lateral deformation it's give it will give you a different feel or different features which is not possible in a uh, conventional architectural uh, or conventional material then the this particular part is the oxidic related to the oxidic forms so these oxidic forms or i would say oxidic polyurethane forms these oxidic polyurethane forms we have been achieved with having a poisson ratio of 0.7 you see the my my target or my desire is to achieve the extreme poisson ratio negative poisson ratio so that it could be utilized for a different class of problems that we are solving either in civil mechanical aerospace or in the different sectors so if we are having these oxidic polyurethane forms which is having a poisson ratio of 0.7 and that was first was manufactured by a scientist at the university of nottingham and university of uh, i think um, bristol Uh, at the advanced composite center there they have been formed with the reentrant cell structure which is given in figure a on this particular uh, figure mm. this oxidic form could be produced from conventional form through process now what would happen your process technique has to be developed in the in this way so that the volumetric um, compression which involves a volumetric compression heating beyond the polymer softening because it is a polymer so polymer softening temperature to be maintained in this particular fashion and then the cooling whilst it is remaining under the compression 
So besides PU foam or the polyurethane foam, the polyurethane, polyurethane foams, other polyethylene foams were transformed into the reentrant microstructure through thermomechanical processing. So the processing technology also are going to emerge very rapidly to achieve this kind of unusual behavior, right? So when I started my own uh, uh, study on this particular, when I came up the first time uh, regarding this uh, unusual pattern or exotic pattern, around 2008, 2009, I was a bit surprised that how it is possible because it was, uh, I was giving so many questions to one of my collaborator that doesn't it uh, actually uh, violate the thermodynamic principles? Doesn't it violate some other physical governing principles? Then from there, we have been started and we have been identified so many different things that could come up or that could be merged together to achieve this kind of um, material. Okay. So this oxidic cellular structure are having or the gen it is generated a huge research interest. If you look into the, uh, the major funding agency in US, major funding agency in European countries, many people are talking about now this oxidics, many people. And there is a dedicated, I think one or two conference, uh, conferences are there, series of conferences are there only about the oxidics. There is a, already a company has been formed with this oxidics. So that is what it is actually generating a huge research interest as a candidate for the energy absorption due to their appealing features, including extremely high indentation resistance, fracture resistance, etc. all the mechanical properties related to. However, these oxidic forms reported so far typically can only sustain a very limited loading force and impact within a counterintuitive behavior. So we report a highly efficient sound. You know that when we have all of we in a day-to-day -day life, we use the, our mm, headphone. Okay. Now, if we, if we are using the headphone like a Bose or JBL, you will find that the cost is too high. And that is one point. And another point is in most of the now headphones are coming with a feature about the noise cancellation. What is mean by the noise cancellation? Noise cancellation means again, some of the unwanted waves are basically going to not entering into your ear some of the unwanted frequency waves with having unwanted frequencies are basically rejecting from your headphone. So who is doing that? Somebody is doing that. Some of the materials, some of the um, things are doing that inside your headphone. So that is called a certain other metamaterial, which is called the acoustic metamaterial which essentially gives you a particular thought that, okay, I can only allow this particular frequency of the waves. Other than this frequency of the waves, I will reject. I will not allow them to pass. So it is something like a, a pass filter. So how that is filter has been made now the acoustic metamaterial is being side by side is being developing over there who are actually utilizing or developing the or working as a sound engineer or web mechanics in fact the similar features are also being utilized in the seismic metamaterial or seismic protection it is the same feature the idea was not new the base isolation was the very old i would not say very old at least two decades back or three decades back, the idea of the base isolation was developed, but still it is going, plenty of research is going on, but the direction has been moved into a different way. 
So that is the direction now people, people are picking up. Right. So that is what I said, the oxidative forms reported so far are, can only sustain a very limited loading force and impact with the counterintuitive uh, behavior. We report uh, here, we report in this particular paper in a composite part B engineering, that a highly efficient sound and shock absorber, which is based on three-dimensional oxidative forms with the two-dimensional wrinkling, wrinkled graphene oxides or graphene that has been developed. Compared with the pure foam, polyurethane foam, this oxidative heterostructure or oxidative forms are with a corrugated 2D graphene and graphene sheets is showing almost 99.7 sound, um, sound absorbing capacity of 99.7% as a frequency at a frequency of 2 kilohertz, 2.2 kilohertz. And the shock absorbing capacity or shock absorb, uh, shock energy absorb, um, absorption is almost at the range of 190% enhancement is there for the impact loading. So the synergistic effect between the 3D oxidic foam and the 2D wrinkled graphene over that the foam has been on the over that foam results in stable compressive cycling, perf cycling performance, which is more indentation resistance, more energy dissipation during the local impacts, your seismic isolations, etc. So this 3D re-engineered. 3D re-engineered oxidic pura structure with the 2D coupled your nano, uh, nanotechnology stuffs are giving you a new and cost-effective strategy to effectively absorb the acoustic as well as the, your shock energy. So same thing about the oxidic polymers. So the oxidic effects was first observed in the polymer in the 1989. I'm trying to cover up as much as possible with regard to, to this oxidics. So it is actually based on an expanded form of the PTFE, which was found to exhibit a highly anisotropic negative Poisson ratio as low as Poison ratio is minus 12 in nature. So this is due to the complex microstructure which consists of nodules, which is intercontact connected with the fibrils and which is being shown over here. Nodule fibril microstructure of oxidic PTFE. Right. So this oxidic can be produced in a polymer other than PTFE through the batch processing technique. So the, uh, this process utilized to produce oxidic porous structure with a sample of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, polypropylene, nylon, etc. The role of the compaction stage is to impart the structural integrity to the extruders. So this material poses two interesting features. First, one is the indentation resistance and second, absorption to the ultrasound. Ultrasound means Again, this ultrasound is again the radioactive uh, radio um, radio waves. Okay, I, I don't know whether you are um, uh, you are aware of that particular incident or not. Uh, one of my student actually informed me he was in Indian Army and recently posted in uh, Jammu. He said that sir, uh, during the recent uh, uh, standoff at the Ladakh, there was a several things has been happened uh, in regarding the R&D sector. And sometimes people talk about that uh, during the night movement of the artillery, people, the, um, the opponents can easily trace this movement of the night movement of the artillery by using the thermal imaging glass. Okay. Now, 
thermal imaging how do they therm do the thermal imaging thermal imaging they do they actually injects a thermal gun with a certain frequency 27 to 36 kilohertz frequency that frequency if it is going to get reflected from a metal body that means something is moving or something has been there now the thing is can we have something over here that particular frequency 20 to 36 kilohertz or megahertz frequency instead of reflecting if it is getting absorbed that means even the artillery is moving over there in the front people cannot trace it out so that is the thing that people are now talking about from the defense point of view so now that is called the stealth condition in fact, when a radar is going to detect a particular aircraft or the fighter aircraft, whatever it may be, they inject certain waves are basically interacting with each other from the radar. Okay. So can we have something that that particular wave is not going to detect? So we can have certain mechanisms over there, which would generate or develop certain material coat, coating of the material on onto the top of that actual structure so that the things cannot be detected. So our defense personals would be very, very healthy situation in that particular context or the safe situations. So we have to think of in that particular direction. Okay. Similarly, as I said that previously that auxiliary composite, auxiliary composite essentially two different ways the auxiliary composite can be made. And you know the composites we are basically um, utilizing in civil engineering many different um, applications. In fact, our FRP bridge deck or the retrofitting whenever we are doing the retrofitting we are doing the FRP laminations. So there, everywhere we are basically using some of the, some sort of the composites. So can we have some, something like a auxiliary composite? Already people started working over there. So it can, other than the conventional property of the laminate or conventional property of the composite, we are basically adding on certain other property that could be utilized in addition to our conventional laminated composites. So here also on the same ground, here also we are talking about that we are basically started working over there to develop the semi auxotic laminates or auxotic laminates, which could be typically utilized in our civil engineering retrofitting um, strategy or retrofitting sets. Okay. But when we do the composites, the composites are basically made of your, if it is a laminated, then with the, having a different ply. I cannot change the matter and the property of the ply. What I could change, I could change the on the top layer or the bottom layer or the uh, different layers of the um, composite which is having the auxotic behavior means i can address or i can add the and another one layer which essentially is having the auxotic means negative compressibility or negative expand expandability um, characteristics or behavior property kind of material over there, then it would take or it would consider the most of the things in the way that what the pitfalls were there for the laminated conventional laminated composites. If we introduce this kind of uh, characteristics or this kind of behavior, it will take up the whatever was not there for the laminated composite, conventional laminated composite, that will be taken care of by using some of the yarns or some of the helical rings. 
and that can be easily utilized with the application of the your laminations during the laminations here i am trying to show some of the case studies that we as a civil engineer or mechanical engineering or the aerospace engineering we do study from our research project point of view so here some of the classical potential applications that people or we could talk about the uh, difference defense application point of view some of the other potential defense application in fact our not only potent defense application but also our civil uh, civil application many times nowadays i look into the newspaper and i feel i see that whenever there is a certain kind of uh, there is certain uh, certain areas in our country not in a segregated not in a consolidated mode but in a segregated mode all of a sudden the blast has been done that is due to this uh, uh, used to happen during the dipabali the all the this uh, our crackers and all this uh, from the factory that has been blasted so can we have something that there would not be any major injury over there even our civil applications so we we can do or we can utilize this kind of things over in a civil engineering applications also and recently office of the naval research wener has uh, in us has solicited uh, some proposals on the application of auxotic textile for the military protective clothing as well as for the civil um, civil applications under the small business technology perspective so you see the it is coming it is coming to the on ground or on practical scenario not in a theoretical sense exactly so if you are talking about on ground or on ground then essentially we have also to look into or to make some our startup or our our thought process in a different dimensions so that the similar kind of things can be developed over here in our country okay second point of this uh, meta material first point was the oxidizing that means the negative poison ratio second point is the negative stiffness i think uh, i'll not be able to cover up the entire uh, presentations so the negative stiffness has been there so in the negative stiffness negative stiffness means usually will have the if we are having a load deformation behavior generally we will have a in an increasing or monotonically increasing in nature after that it 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 actually orients in a constant in magnitude but if the loading has been increased then if the deformation has been decreased from the very beginning itself so what would happen the structure itself is called a multi stable system or multi stable structure so it is for, for example suppose for example anyone if you are holding your business card between the thumb and four finger or a steel scale which is being shown over here in the figure providing an axial force that bows the card or the scale can experience the principle of the bi stable system a normal force on the card at the center can cause it to snap through to its second stable position the design of the carved bin bi stable system mechanism is inspired from the bi stable buckled straight bin mechanism where a straight bin is axially compressed to buckle to stable position at either side modeling of this buckling mode of the lateral me lateral mechanism that bi stable mechanism is critical to model the carved bin mechanism so eventually if we have a carved beam which we do consider it is a imperfection but if we have that carved beam now if you are applying the load what would happen it will come into a position of the straight position right so if it comes under the straight position after apply application of the load 
what is going to happen your load is being increased but your deformation is being in a negative in sense it is not increasing in pattern so this point a and point b or point a and point c in this particular example snap through example right point a and point c or point b in this particular figure or point both top and bottom figure no unique solution is existed okay so the tangential stiffness for this single degree of freedom system i have been considered only a single degree of freedom system okay it's been defined as the rate of change of the force with respect to the displacement so the stiffness is thus the negative between the point a and b a negative stiffness is often related to the numerical and physical instability always as we know when we we talk about the stability of the system so based on this particular concept the negative stiffness meta material is being developing which is i believe that uh, we are uh, and i have shown over here that whatever i, I was talking about the recoverable shock isolation which essentially gives me an idea about the regarding the our civil engineering application also the conventional honeycomb is giving something way that but if we are having negative stiffness honeycomb it is giving you a you a recoverable shock isolation and essentially we need to configure or we need to identify what kind of stiffness property spring stiffness or material stiffness property individual material stiffness property that we we need to think of it so that it will not break or it will not fracture itself or it will not lead to the direct failure itself okay so the reusable composites again with the negative stiffness structure or negative stiffness material again i have trying to showing you the same thing in our testing the bottom uh, right right bottom corner figure so the reusable co composite nanostructure is been composed of two material system which has been shown over here it is possible potentially to be used in shock isolation vibration control even in the deployable structure the specimen was the basically fabricated by using the additive manufacturing technique not conventional or manual process so this mechanical properties of this structure are then studied with then combination of the compression test and the simulation and the repeatability of this structure is then verified through the cyclic compression the this is the cyclic compression energy how much is the energy absorption things are coming into the picture so this result of impact test reveals that this composite uh, negative stiffness structure has a good cushion cushion performance by adjusting adjusting the threshold of acceleration response amplitude and completely reusable when snap through behavior occurs again another one different kind of your um, architectural configuration geometrical configuration which again eventually could be used the negative stiffness it is based on the cylindrical uh, negative stiffness structure which is composed of specially curved beam and potentially being applied to again to the shock isolation vibration control and also into the deployable structure so i am i am just skipping this particular uh, figure and here this i just want to show you one thing over here this whatever the um, i would say the 1 2 3 uh, this one let me just take it right ah this one you please look into this one this particular arrangement already is being developed and it is being installed in a car by a car manufacturer to 
reduce the shock during the movement of that particular card there was a um, relatively uh, and it was developed in the last year itself or ra rather i would say it was developed and it was uh, installed in the last year itself and it came in a very big news in uh, uk with uh, that uh, university of bristol has been developed and uh, i uh, this this uh, this person uh, fabrizio scarpa is one of my collaborator with whom actually i started with this exotic uh, characteristics or exotic behavior and when he uh, said to me that uh, we have been actually on the field we have been installed and it is being um, considering uh, considerable attention is being um, uh, um, considerable attention is being um, pushed to the by different car manufacturer then i um, i told him that uh, it was a really really massive job that uh, you you guys have uh, demonstrated the same thing to the car industry so that the vibration isolation or the shock isolations over the movement of the car could be greatly impacted so this is the this is the way i think uh, we should look into that and again this is the same thing that we, they have been basically utilized the negative stiffness as well as the negative poison ratio both the features they have been ideally characterized and you see over here if you look into this particular figure or particular animation you will find nothing that everything is a metallic components okay but the orientation of the different component of the to make the entire entity is bit different so it is just like a, our uh, sci-fi movie in the hollywood that uh, the, some of the movies were there that iron man or some of the movies it is something like that so here also i am just trying to show you some of the other features which is having the negative stiffness property on um, essentially giving the uh, protective gear of this uh, vibration isolation or the noise isolation by utilizing the negative stiffness meta material there are lot of different varieties that we could talk about there is an endless opportunity or endless possibilities that we could talk about while developing this kind of meta material which is associated with the stiffness or the poison ratio or the compressibility that is you can do at any um, at any way but we have to start with some very basic thing with a periodic lattice structure or periodic um, or the unit cell structure which will be giving us our desired characteristics okay so this particular subclass is uh, having the strong lightweight mechanical meta material that can be placed into four general category of their structure micro or nano lattice chiral anti chiral hierarchical meta material or the origami inspired meta material okay secondly we have to restore when we are talking about the micro or nano we have to restore the crystallographic theory in the natural material for the good understanding of what we fabricate so particularly for the various metallic and the polymeric structure so the two factors for example the unit cell and the its tessellations and rotations are to be considered or ought to be designed in such a way so that this particular configuration or this particular desired property could be achieved i am just also skipping trying to skip over here that you see the chiral or anti chiral even it is existed in the nature it is existed in the sorry in the nature here also it is existed in the nature the chirality so we are not doing anything that is purely man made 
we are basically trying to get trained from the natural phenomena natural things that is been there and we are taking up from that we are taking up their configuration and we are trying to utilize in an engineering domain after making the fabrication so we are not doing nothing new things are being already there in the nature we are basically trying to reutilizing or reengineering our um, our structures okay so this multifunctional chiral metamaterial again the same thing sometimes um, if you if you look into the um, that movie that uh, uh, what is that movie uh, i think uri if you look into the movie uri that uh, that guy uh, who was there in the drdo for for an entrance if he developed in uh, gadur if you could remember that uh, the term actually it was flapping the wing was flapping okay so that is that means it is the morphing mechanism has been developed okay so how that flapping and morphing mechanism has been developed it was a basically a bird they have been prototyped as a bird but that wing was been flapping so the, again that shape morphing has been or can be developed with using this chiral metamaterial and it is having a versatility and extreme range of your deformation can be utilized and that extreme range of deformation or the uh, i would say the versatility cannot be cannot be identified or cannot be developed by using our regular thought process or regular structural configuration okay even the same thing can be utilized for your biomedical implant applications also the stents whatever we are using when we are doing the angiogram or angioplasty the stents or whatever we are using that is also being deployed after going after inserting it that balloon is being deployed after inserting into your vein or after inserting into into your body and after reaching or targeting a particular organ right so that is also the deployable um, capability deployable capability means the extreme deformation has been developed over here okay so you have to have certain things over there the mechanism so how that mechanism could be developed that mechanism again also could be developed by using this negative stiffnesses or the multifunctional characteristics of the different metamaterial right so again the this is a origin uh, it is a continuation of the negative stiffness characteristics and all there are many different uh, orientation or many different protocols are there here the basic protocol is the origami inspired origami or krigami origami and krigami you know already many of you know that it is a age old technique which was been used in the japan for making the toys without uncutting actually it is a folding mechanism of a paper okay so this origami the term origami has been derived from the japanese compound noun the ori which means the folded and the kami which means the paper so origami japanese people used to say it is a ori kami ori means folded kami means paper so currently this origami the this art of folding the uncut sheet of paper into a decorative and well defined shapes is now being used used beyond purely aesthetic pursuits to design ultra light and customizable mechanical material so this origami relies on folding and assembling of the planar material to create the elegant three, di three dimensional or 3d shapes whose variety and complexity is governed by the number order and orientation of the folding similarly over here i am trying to show that uh, this is the this uh, these are the configuration sorry these are the configuration that origami and kirigami without uncutting of a paper so how it could be achieved 
or it could be utilized in our regular or practical application. You see this anti-clastic synclastic curvature in the in our helmets. So this anti-clastic or synclastic curvature in our helmets, if we are designing something like that to weigh, the impact which is coming onto our head after hitting it, it would be reduced significantly as compared to the conventional helmets. Okay, it is now being utilized and developing for the military helmets or the, uh, I would not say military helmets, the uh, helmets which are being utilized or used for the army personnels. The same thing over here. Okay, one is the planar, now the cellular origami principles are being utilized. I think I am too much about the, the different uh, metamaterial stuffs which you, you guys, you people require to um, get start with that before um, getting more into the different aspects over there. So let me just uh, conclude over here and uh, I would be happy to uh, answer the different queries if um, people are, whatever the people are having. So I think that would be much more helpful for the people, those who want to start their own work or own um, idea. Okay. So Babu sir. Yes, I'm here. I think uh, uh, I can share with uh, my slides. That is not an issue, but I think uh, I should, uh, I should uh, uh, answer some of the questions for which uh, the audiences can be benefited over there rather than keeping one by one. The participants are requested to ask some questions for clarity. If you want to get some clarity regarding some doubts, please ask the doubts. Whether any chart is available to compare the properties of these better materials with other materials like steel, copper or something like that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is actually the kind of structure that you want to prepare. And what you can do is you can take the conventional material and this is also a conventional material, but I am just, so what I'm doing is I'm basically orienting that uh, uh, different architecture over here. So there is a one-to-one -one comparisons that we can, anyone can make it up. Hey, what about this um, compressive strength as good as the um, uh, tensile strength? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Compressive strength would be as good as the uh, tensile strength. That's it. I request the audience to ask some questions. I think it, um, my talk was too abstract. Uh, the, the, no, no, not like that. It's a, it's a new something. It is a entirely new material. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's the uh, people are um, trying their best to digest it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
if no more questions are there we can uh, wind up the session because now the time is uh, uh, 12:55 any questions otherwise we can wind up okay sir thank you Sandeep. okay uh, hello Ah, yes. Yes. Okay. So I take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Chaudhary for the effort he have taken to give us a session today on meta materials. So I think this is a, a new topic for many of us. Uh, thank you so much, sir. You, uh, thank you so much for introducing such a new material for us. Uh, your session was very informative, uh, and uh, we expect your support always. Thank you so much thank from you. the part of the my department. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv Chaudhary. Thank you, thank you, sir. Love, sir. I will contact you again. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks.